welcome back. If it's your first time here, warm welcome and thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Today we're going to do a simple potting up of Prostechia radiata, which I got as a gift from Dana Mosanu. And there's a lot going on with this orchid. And I want to put your mind at rest. It's the fact that... <laughs> If you see, when you see, if you notice how desiccated these pseudobulbs are compared to how I received her from the unboxing video. Complete difference. This little growth here was growing at the time when she arrived in my collection and she is now growing roots. So because I'm going into LECA and self-watering and I am not sure if this orchid was in inorganic media before, or if she was in bark, I was waiting for the new roots to grow and I wasn't particularly concerned about the state of the pseudobulbs as they were deteriorating because prostechias are so vigorous that either she will bounce back once she grows a good root system. These orchids are very, very vigorous root growers. But if I don't recover the entire glossy shine of the beautiful prostechia pseudobulbs, there will be some ridges, but she will recover. That's why I waited so long. I did not want to have to start misting at the base of a new growth, risking it to rot. But there's more deterioration because Prostechia <laughs> radiata wants to bloom. And I have not cut this spike off. And you're probably going to say, well, that's why your pseudobulbs are so desiccated. And I'm going to entirely agree with you on that. Well, I didn't cut this off because of the characteristics of a prostechia being so vigorous that they can handle some desiccation and some abuse, but also because before I cut the spike, for my records, I wanted to see the blooms document them and then cut the spike. This was completely unexpected, but we will see how this spike responds to the potting up. Who knows, maybe now the buds will blast because she's been living indoors protected from the outside elements all this time. And of course, I'm bringing her outside where it's much, much warmer. There's a lot of breeze going on, <laughs> let's put it that way. And it's possible that these buds will blast. And if they do, well, the spike is going to come off either way. And well, I wasn't trying to be hospitable to ants, but they clearly are enjoying the sweet sugary substance called happy sap that prostechias are so proliferous at producing. Okay, enough of the jibber-jabber. Let's get her into a pot and I'll explain my process to you as I go. Before I do that, sorry, this is how I've been tidying her over. She came with some beautiful fluffy sphagnum moss around the roots that she had. I don't think any of them are viable anymore, but I've been keeping this sphagnum moss damp in the eventuality that some of the roots that she does have were viable. I have been misting the moss with calcium and magnesium and seaweed, but in such a weak concentration because evaporation is a thing this time of year here in my climate in southern Spain, and I did not want any salt buildup in this sphagnum moss. The main purpose was just to keep it damp so that the orchid would not lose too much dehydration through her leaves. Don't know if it worked, don't know if that would have made a difference if I didn't let the spike develop and form buds, but we are in this position and I am not concerned about this prostechia because once those roots are in the pot, we will see how she will revive those pseudobulbs. Now let's get going. Right, I thought I was gonna have to fandangle quite a bit of sphagnum moss off the roots, but it appears it just fell off when I was showing them to you. I don't know how much there is that is viable here. Now we could also say, well, how about we use some of these roots for anchoring? Prostechias are so, so vigorous in the root production front. I am sometimes inclined to leave dead roots on an orchid for the purposes of anchoring. But in general, if the root here is dead, then I'm going to be really radical and take them off because I don't want to be digging into this orchid in two years time to keep the roots clean, the root ball aerated and have to really dig into the center of it, making my life a little bit more difficult. So we will be cutting off the dead roots, not using that as anchoring. I have a support prepared for this orchid. Some of the roots are viable, but I'm just testing to make sure that I can get, you know, the obvious dead ones out, especially if you can pull away the velamen and leave a strand. 
a string like that yeah that's gone usually by where it is kinked it's gone sometimes as you move up the root system it starts to be alive again that's not the case with this one so we can remove that this is the perfect stage for me to be potting this orchid up i like working with super super fresh root nubbins not even properly extended i feel as though my klutziness has a form like a buffer a form of protection from doing any damage if roots get too extended then it you know it becomes a little bit more precarious so this is the perfect time i like the fact that the roots are only at the beginning stages so just moving my way up and down a root from a kink that clearly is desiccated at the base there's another slight kink in this root further up but it's firm so we're going to leave that this one is also still firm but we're going to take off all the little branching bits down here they are not relevant anymore here's one that is pretty dead all the way to the base we'll get rid of that this one is nice and long uh, have we got something that's viable there hmm nope clearly not let's turn her around gently the closer we get to the root nubbins the more careful i have to get with my snips this can all go i forget the name now of the purple that was dana's version of cinnamon i'll put the name up on the screen violet something or other also a disinfectant antibacterial good stuff i used to use it in kenya a lot for cuts and bruises this one is very desiccated all the way to the top uh, which angle am i going to come in at bear with me while i concentrate <laughs> multitasking here all right that's it she's all cleaned up she's ready to go into her pot looking pretty good except for the pseudobulbs that are looking somewhat scary but you know what not for long this is the easiest way to transition an orchid into new media even if you were to take it from leka and self-watering inorganic and putting it into organic media any transition is easiest and less stressful on the orchid when new roots grow has nothing to do with a setup that is a global guarantee that whatever you do with your orchid when you receive it in your collection you wait for new roots to grow then you can pretty much put it in any setup of your choice with any media of your choice guaranteeing that the new roots are going to grow into your media and as long as the rest of the culture is okay that orchid is not going to skip a beat. So what I've done here, because Prostechias are such vigorous root growers, and when they get growing, they are thirsty. They drink like a sailor. It is incredible how much water they take up. For that reason, I have chosen small leka as opposed to large leka. Small leka is gonna help me not just with the wicking. You see the loop has been pulled up to increase the wicking efficacy from the reservoir with the microfibers up to the middle pretty much of the pot which will then raise the potential of more wicking to the surface of the pot the small lecker being so much more water retentive as well than large lecker is is going to give this orchid a double whammy to meet the needs of its high watering requirements now i'm going to just take my orchid and see how she's going to sit in the pot i would like to say put the orchid at the back let her grow into the pot but because this is a division, who knows where she's going to come out next. So, yes, I need that support to help me to anchor her a little bit, give her some form of stability. Question is, do I want her in the back? But when I look at her this way, there's plenty of space in the back for that eye to grow. I could move her a little bit more into the middle, bring my support in to support that part. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take into consideration that my orchid is going to grow from the eyes in the back here simply because the characteristic of this genus does that and i'm going to accommodate for all that extra growth by placing her in the middle and it's going to be a fiddle 
Either way, seeing as she's got no roots, it's going to be a fiddle to keep her steady in the pot. She will not be living outside during these very, very warm days and windy days. So it's not like she's going to experience a lot of jiggle, but I want to make sure that I protect her as best as possible, even though she will be inside because there'll be a lot of flushing coming up in the coming weeks, if not months. So let's get that support in place so that when I'm trying to maneuver her into position, I've already dealt with that and there won't be any jiggling. Now, those roots are viable. So here comes the fiddly part. Let's just replicate what we decided in the beginning right here. Let's see if we can fill her up easily. All right, can my non-existent assistant please show up, make an appearance? I need a second set of hands. <laughs> All right, so what I've done here now, she looks like she's too low in the pot, but I needed to get a hold so that she doesn't wobble around. I'm gonna raise her up a little bit and correct her position in the pot just slightly, gently. I'm telling you, if evolution continues along these lines, orchid growers will be the first to get a third arm. I bet you. Okay, her position is where she is. Let's give her a little bit more support around the base. Always keeping an eye on those root nubbins. I don't want any lecker to be touching them, putting any kind of stress on them, abrasions, none of that. If they are going to be suspended for the next couple of days until they go into the media, then so be it. Okay, before I fill up with more lecker around this side right here, I'm going to add another support and bring her more secure by using this pseudobulb. The breeze is helping me test the stability of what I'm about to do. I actually thought one support would be plenty. There we go. Let's get her in position, also using this pseudobulb. And eventually I can take all of that off. And it may take six weeks before I can remove that, but that in an orchid life, six weeks is fast. So you see we have our root nubbins there in place. There's a gap that needs to be filled off to the left. We'll take care of that. We're dealing with some very good looking root nubbins there. They can go into the media. Yep, it's looking good from my perspective. And I hope that you see what I'm trying to do here to make sure that the orchid's roots go in, don't desiccate, and then revive the pseudobulbs. All right, so we can fill around the gaps here, raising the humidity levels. And I'm going to just remove the back of the leca here because there is, it's a little bit of a dry eye, but <laughs> Maybe it'll form into something when she recognizes that she's now stable in the pot. And if you have any questions about the fact that my pot is so big, well, if what I am anticipating is actually going to happen, this orchid will probably be bumped up one more pot size next year. If not, then of course in 2024. But I am not going with a small pot to somehow match the dimensions of the orchid that she's currently in. What I'm looking for is to give her a pot so I can leave her in that pot for as long as possible without disturbing her year after year. Just trying to think ahead and take the vigor of the orchid into consideration by planning using a big pot. With inorganic media, the pot size is not relevant. 
What is relevant with pot size when it comes to inorganic growing is how much space have you got? <laughs> because at the end of the day, our media doesn't break down. So we don't have to think about my pot is staying too wet because the setup is also self-watering or semi-hydroponics. So inevitably, it's a wet environment. A wet environment without the danger of media breaking down, we can take a pot size indefinitely. But, you know, again, sometimes space is an issue and it doesn't necessarily mean that we can go too crazy at the beginning. Also, resources are an issue because from here on in, this orchid is going to need a lot, a lot of flushes to make sure that the roots are going down into the pot and get a lot of oxygen around them. And we can test her stability now. Lift her up. Set her back down. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. We can give her her first flush. Not that this lecker needs it. It was cleaned and sterilized. But still, it was sat in water of 8 pH and what I'm pouring through now is 7 pH. So that is just a little added detail, something that I do to make sure that whatever I'm going to do from here on in is not going to have a pH of the water that the lecker was stored in. And in the meantime, I did bust a bud to be expected. That's okay. We'll see if this orchid is going to dump her buds because you can tell how much wind I have got going around on my patio. I'm just going to remove some of the lecker beads that fell during the flushing. I don't want them anywhere near the root tips just now. And you can see because of the conditions, that is why she is going to go indoors until all the root tips have managed to get down into the media. There's always one leaf, right? Good grief. Once the root tips are down in the media, I will backfill with the leka that I have propped up here on the outer edge. There we go. No risk to those roots. Right. That is Prostechia radiata all potted up. And with the exception of one final very important detail, her tag. There we go. Let's see how these buds will fare. Would be nice to be able to document the blooms. At least there's that. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments are there for a reason. I welcome them and I appreciate them. Even if you don't have questions, let me know you're here. Say hi. Hope everything's going well today for you. I appreciate your time very, very much. And the ant, they just don't care, do they? Have a beautiful day, everybody, on one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm.